What's going on everybody? Jeremy here and right now all of you are experiencing something that has changed history. Not only has it changed history, it's changed you. The way you live, the way you see life, and the way you treat other people. But here's the kicker. You don't even realize it. Today we're talking about movement. Fad fade. Movements move. God tests to bring out the best. Everybody matters in the body. In our world, there are different kinds of movements. There's body movements, music movement, internet movements, bowel movements, and as we'll see today, spiritual movements. Now, here's the common link between movements. Movements are built to do one of two things. One, they're built to take something that is good and to push it into our world or into our society. Or the second thing, movements are built to undo or resist things that are bad in our world or our society. Movements are built to move. Whether we recognize it or not, some of the things that we now see as normal were once radical ideas that people had to fight for. For example, how many of you ladies at some point want to go to college, get a job, and be the boss, make some good money? Raise your hand. Yeah, no, that's good. But now, that would not have happened years ago. You see, women were not allowed to go to college. They were not allowed to be the boss. They were not allowed to make more money than the guy next to them. And for us, that's a crazy thought, but that was a reality a reality that was changed by the women's rights movement. Or what about the men? The radical men who took a stand against the British Empire and said, "We are going to unite as 13 colonies and we are going to pursue life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness." And they basically created their own nation, the United States of America, and because of that, you, me, we get to experience freedom. Why did these movements begin? Because a person or a group of people had an idea. They had a vision. Or in Martin Luther King Jr.'s words, they had a dream of a better way to live, a better way to treat other people. And that vision, what could be was so powerful in their life that they were willing to fight. They were willing to sacrifice. They were willing to do what was unpopular to make right things popular. And those things are now just normal in our society. That is a movement. I was at an event in Atlanta, Georgia, and we were led into a fire station. Now, this happened to be the historic fire station number six, one of the first desegregated fire stations in the South in the 1960s. So as we walked in and sat down, over in the corner, an older gentleman stood up and walked forward. He said, my name is G.H. Williams. I am one of the last remaining men alive today that marched with Dr. Martin Luther King. Well, of course, right there, you kind of got my attention. Then he goes on to say, I never thought I would see blacks, whites, and all nations in one room all together. Every single time that I went out on a march, I would take three things with me, a washcloth, a toothbrush and a dime. A washcloth to wash my face, a toothbrush to brush my teeth, and a dime to call home to my loved ones to let them know I was okay if I got arrested that day. You see, at that moment, I was literally sitting there looking at someone who had changed history. So it occurred to me that G.H. Williams and others chose to step out and step into a movement. So the question today is, what will your life be about? Will it be about following the fad or will it be about joining the movement? Will you be part of a fad or a movement? What award did Martin Luther King Jr. win in 1964? A. Teen Choice Award B. Pulitzer Prize Award C. Nobel Peace Prize D. Academy Award The answer is C. Nobel Peace Prize. 
He won the award when he was 35 years old. All right, so what is a fad? Like a trend? I have no idea. Something that's just trending. It's really popular among groups of people. It's like short term, like not temporary. Like what's in style for that period of time? So what are some things style-wise that are in? Like high-waisted shorts, leggings, and a t-shirt. Of course, you got to have your Nike shoes. Those are in. I think high-top Converse are in. One Direction. Joggers. Joggers are in right now. What's something that's out right now? Capri pants. Nobody wears capri pants, really. Probably flared jeans or anything like really, really baggy. I would say like shoulder pads out. Really high shoes. Silly bands. Those are out. Um, so what is the difference between a fad and a movement? A fad is something that's going to go away. A movement is something that's supposed to stay forever. Fad and a movement. OK, a fad is like something like little, like, and movements like boom. Movements more like long periods of time and it like stay. Fad is where, yeah, it's there for a little bit, but eventually it will go out of style. Okay, so here's the deal. You've all experienced some sort of movement or even a fad. How many of you remember the ice bucket challenge or Coney and the invisible children or even something fun like the Harlem Shake? Yeah, we've all experienced one of those things. And here's the deal, they were good things, they were fun things, but they didn't last. They faded, no one's still doing them. And here's our point for today. Fads fade, movements move. Here are 10 fads that should never, ever make a comeback. Number one, calling everything swag. You know, this jacket's really swag. Most of my hat, swag. Number two, jelly bracelets. Number three, Justin Bieber. Baby, baby, baby. No. Number four. Finger hashtagging everything. Hashtag stop. Number five. Facebook. I'm your grandma. I'm on Facebook. Why would I want to have something my mom has? I mean, really? Number six. Gangnam Style. Yeah, we're over it. Number seven. The Mole. Number eight. Baggy Pants. Number nine, planking. Not cool anymore. Number 10, people always shouting YOLO in your face. YOLO, YOLO, YOLO. So, fads fade, but movements move. Movements make a difference. Movements move people, movements make history. And for the next couple minutes, I want to jump into a movement that took place in John chapter 6. So if you have your Bible or if you have view version, I want you to turn there. But let me set it up a little bit and tell you something you may not know about Jesus. Jesus was popular. You see, people wanted to be around Jesus. People wanted to hear him teach. People wanted to see him perform miracles. There was one occasion where 5,000 men, and if you included women, if you included children, you have like 15 to 20,000 people who went and traveled to hear Jesus speak. Jesus wasn't just popular, Jesus was trending. And then we get into John chapter 6 while he's trending, and Jesus does something that's sort of unpopular. He starts saying crazy things like, eat my flesh and drink my blood, and it's sort of like a vampire movie. But what Jesus was getting to is, hey, what I expect from you is changing. I want more from you. And we're gonna jump into verse 66. I want you to look at the response of the people to Jesus raising the standard. And it says this. At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Now this word disciple means follower. It means student. These were people who were learning from Jesus. And as soon as Jesus sort of up to Annie, as soon as Jesus raised the bar, they sort of said, whoa, 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 I'm out. Hey, I'm gonna drop out, this isn't for me. And they began to walk away, it says many of them left. Then, picks up again, Jesus turned to the 12. Now, the 12, these are his best friends, his best students, the people who'd given up their life, their career, but they would say everything to follow Jesus. And listen to the question he asked the 12. He says, are you also going to leave? Here's our way out. 
Now, leaving would be the easy decision. Leaving would be the popular decision. Leaving would almost be the smart decision. But listen to what Peter says in verse 68. He says, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. We believe and we know that you are the Holy One of God. We believe and we know. You see, Peter and these other 11 guys had seen things, they'd experienced things. Their lives had been changed. They'd seen other lives change. And they knew that the answer, the right thing was standing right in front of them. And that thing, that person was Jesus. You see, this all could have faded, but instead, this movement began to move and we are experiencing this today, 2,000 years later, because they believed and they knew. So think about this, today, 2,000 years later, this movement, the church, is impacting millions of people. And whether you see it or not, it's actually impacting you. This movement has changed the lives of people, families, and even the world. It's also changed history. So the question is, do you believe in it? Do you know it? Are you willing to go all in? If not, this may just be a fad for you. You see, God wants us to be a part of this movement. But the reality is that fads, they fade. Movements, they move. So if you could be a part of any movement, what would it be and why? Um, I, would, I think I would try to get people to be a lot nicer. The movement towards Christ. Why? Because that's the best movement there is. All right, now it's your turn. I want you guys to turn to the person next to you and tell them what movement you would be a part of and why. All right, great answers, everybody. Now let's get back to Jeremy. So here's the deal. For years, we have built Switch to be the best two hours of your week. And as a result, thousands of students all over the world experience Switch every single week. And we're popular. But here's the problem. Our goal is not to be popular because as we all know, fads fade. What we want to be is we want to be a movement. We want to move. We want to make a difference. We want to make history. So we're going to do what Jesus did. We're going to up the ante. We're going to change the commitment level. We're going to ask more out of you. And we understand some of you may leave. It's not for every one of you, but for those who stick it out, for those who say, I'm in, for those who are willing to go to that next level, you will have an opportunity to be part of the greatest spiritual movement this world has ever experienced. And I get it. It probably sounds really big and crazy and almost naive. But here's what I know about our church. We are faith-filled, big thinking, bet the farm risk takers. We will not insult God with small thinking or safe living. So safe living, let me tell you what that is. Safe living is just showing up to switch whenever it's easy or whenever it's convenient. Big thinking is making a commitment to be here every single week so that you can learn and so that you can apply what you learn so that you can make an impact in your school and in your family. Safe living, that's graduating high school, graduating junior high, that's safe. Big thinking is, I'm going to change my high school with the love of Christ. I'm going to change my high school by being nice to others. It's changing my high school by being generous. It's changing my high school in all kinds of different ways. Imagine your high school being a place where every single person who walks through the door being accepted. No bullies, no outcasts. Everyone is accepted. That's big thinking. You can do that. Safe living is just doing what everyone else does. Hey, I graduate, I go to college, I get a job, and I just go on with life. That's safe. That's what everybody's already doing. Big thinking is to figure out what is it that God wants and to jump into that thing with everything you got. Because here's what I know about you and what I know about this generation. You have the potential to move this Jesus movement further and faster than any generation before you. If you are willing to take the stand, if you're willing to live at that higher level. Movements move, 
fads fake. So if you wanna be part of this movement, what do you need to do? Two things I'll tell you today. Number one, accept the invitation. Join the movement. Tell people, I am part of the movement. For those who are on social media, put hashtag the movement. Let people know you are in. And the second part, probably more important today is be consistent. Be here every single week. You see here, we have a place that we're gonna teach you how to live out this movement. You have a person, a small group leader, who their job is to show you how to do this life. And we're going to show you each week where to find your purpose. Because we are faith-filled, big thinking, bet the farm risk takers. And we are part of the greatest movement in the history of the world. It's your turn to carry it. It's your turn to move it forward. What will you do? Fade or move? Will you be part of a fad or a movement?